Every time I sat down to plan this video today, my mind went blank. And it got me to thinking though, that even those of us who are super dupe serious or professionals in this game of watercolor and painting, we still get creative block. We still get painter's block. But there's certain things that I paint no matter what, they turn out pretty good. And those are the things that I run to when my brain is a blank. And I'm gonna share them with you today. So we've got the fairy tale flower. We've got the abstract landscape. And last but not least, my favorite go-to, the strawberry. So you ready to paint? Let's go. Actually, I lied. It's important to note here that when you don't know what to paint, your emotions are typically on high. You're frustrated with yourself. You're gonna be really hard on yourself because you're thinking, I should know what to paint. I should be inspired all the time. So these three little exercises are gonna be all about speed and immediacy. We're gonna go fast and we're gonna just follow our instincts. And as a result, things are gonna be perfectly imperfect. Going in here with my half inch dagger with a press dragon lift around an imaginary center, you're going to create five petals. They're going to be basically a teardrop shape with points on both ends. And as I pick up the pigment, I'm choosing different colors, peaches, pinks, and reds. And I'm making sure that each of the petals is kind of curved in a different way and ultimately has a different personality one from the other. If you're curious to go in a little more depth about the fairy tale flower, check out this video below. You're going to love it. And then rinse my brush and I'm starting to add some green leaves, of course. Press, drag, and lift. Press, drag, and lift two times over for a thicker or wider leaf. And I might connect these with a few little dabs and dashes to suggest a really simple breezy branch or stem. I tend to work in groups of three or five or seven, basically odd numbers, and the same goes typically for leaves. Now you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, I only have two, but one is much larger than the other, and that's basically what makes that work down there, being that they're not odd numbers. And then I'm going in with a rinse brush, picking up a little bit of the pink and the red on my brush. I would say it's about a 60-40% ratio. And I'm going in with the tip of that brush to add some detail. I'm following the contour of my original petals that I created. And yes, this is wet on damp. So my brush is wet with pigment and water and my page is still damp. So it's the wet brush on the damp page. And what that means is that these strokes are gonna diffuse a little bit more than if I had painted on a dry paper. Well, a lot more actually. And if you wanna know more about wet on dry and wet on damp and all the things, watch this video below. I picked up a purple, a blue, and a red on the tip of my brush and added a few dots around the yellow center of this flower and then took that same red and purple only and I'm adding a few dab and lift, press and lift. I'm creating some kind of filler berries here and I'm gonna show you a little secret. Rinse out the brush. Grabbing a different brush here, I'm grabbing my cat's tongue and it's filled with clean water. I'm going to go around those original berry colored dashes with that wet clean brush and disperse some of that original paint to create a berry round shape. Now the key to this is continue to rinse your brush in between or else you will just be spreading around that original wet color that you laid down not too long ago. Okay, so here's the little surprise with today's what to paint when you don't know what to paint exercises. I'm using my fun add pencil whenever you feel like a technique. And yeah, I get it. Like adding pencil to watercolor isn't like groundbreaking or legendary, but it's something that I go to often. It's definitely kind of a creative crutch for me when I'm not feeling too confident in myself and in my skills. I bring out that pencil to just sharpen things up and add some wind or add some crazy and I feel much better about life. So all of these exercises, I'm going to be bringing out the pencil. I'm using an HB. Next up is the abstract landscape. I'm not using reference images in any of these exercises. So feel free to use my paintings as reference if you need that. I'm just going in with my number six round brush and I added a green horizon line and then a simple blue. Yes, I rinsed my brush in between the green and blue to keep my blue nice and clean. I'm adding a blue little swoosh, a little S curve coming down into the foreground and it widens 
it widens as you reach the front or the bottom of the paper adding in some purple mountains some blue mountains and then rinsing my brush to add some yellowy green and then more emeraldy green in the foreground and middle ground little trick everything that is in the foreground appears to the eye to be a little bit more yellow and everything that's in the distant background appears to be more purple or blue it's called atmospheric perspective and if you want to know more about it i'm going to link a video below where i'm going to get real in depth about this phenomenon it's really cool Friends, have a blast with this one. You know the basic structure of a landscape, a horizon line, a middle ground, a foreground, and a very distant background. Add a little sky, do a little whatever, and just have fun with it. The point is just to get yourself inspired to put strokes on the page. It's not to create something perfect. It's not to create something that you will love forever and ever, that you will show everyone in the world no. The point is just having a few go-to projects in the back of your mind when you need them the most. All right, heading in now with my pencil and I want to make this tall mountain here a snow cap. So I'm going above where the purple stops and then creating that little triangle shape to suggest a snow cap going into the foreground into that yellowy green with some bouncy, scratchy, scribbly marks to suggest like field greens and maybe it's wheat maybe it's I don't care what it is it just looks fun and scratchy and I love it and then going into the water with some long sweeping strokes following the contour of the original brush strokes and she's done all right starting the strawberry with a simple sketch a strawberry body the flesh of a strawberry is basically a teardrop but it's very 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 exaggerated in the, the belly of the teardrop the widest part of the teardrop and then on top of that flat part you've got a pointed end of your strawberry and then you've got kind of that flat top on top of that flat top is where you put a couple of leaves i'm going in i'm wetting the space inside of the pencil sketch lines that i made and then dabbing in this gorgeous red and letting it flow I am purposely going very loose very instinctive I am not pre-planning any of my decisions when I go to the palette I grab whatever feels right in the moment I mean I don't have much to choose from this is a more limited palette so I've got peaches and pinks and reds but I'm going for it I'm just going for what feels good going back in here with a flat brush and just scooping up some of that red right away this is a high staining red so I'm scooping it up right away just to create some highlights and then boom in with my cat's tongue dabbing in that fluorescent yellow to kind of give an idea of where the seeds might be in this strawberry and continuing on with some of the greens I'm using an olivey green which basically just feels kind of earthy and has a little bit of a yellow undertone to it and then bringing in the emerald green but at this point friends you're basically painting in your own sketch so it's kind of like a coloring book that you've created for yourself I'm coming in early and hot with that pencil because I already feel like that anxiety of wow this strawberry is big and out of control and I don't know how I feel about it but I'm going in quickly with this pencil and adding in the little seeds just basically a little ill-shaped ovals in the lighter areas in the yellow areas and immediately just adding that pencil really really brings this together and it starts to feel more purposeful i'm really loving that fluorescent yellow so i'm bringing it into the leaf here on the right hand side and a little bit into the baby strawberry also on the right hand side and then i just felt like i needed some swirls and tendrils so i've got my liner brush with a 60 40 percent ratio of pigment to water if you want to know more about the liner brush and how to use it i have a brush drill video i'm going to link it below check it out adding some linear detail in the leaf here and oh friends i'm really happy with this and i hope you are too last but not least while the strawberry is still damp i'm adding some bright pink just some big dabs of color of bright pink here and there to give a little bit more depth and dimension now, if you're still curious of what to paint when you don't know what to paint, maybe these didn't quite hit it for you, I want you to check out this video next because it's all about basic but really fun ways to swatch your palette. And honestly, creative swatching of colors is the ultimate thing to paint when you don't know what to paint. I'm saying paint a lot and I'm going to say it again. Happy painting, friends.